Listen to that tremolo, that swirling goodness. Here we are looking at the 1962 Princeton Chris Stapleton amp. Um, man, I, I love this amp. First of all, uh, Chris Stapleton, love his work, uh, love his cover of Etta James' I'd Rather Go Blind. Just kidding ya. Uh, <laughs> although, that you gotta admit, that is like one of the most amazing covers of this of this century. So good on you, and good on on Fender for recognizing this dude's artistry. I mean, he like, I love that he totally kind of redirected country music in particular by this kind of old school approach of just some guys in a room playing great music on cool instruments. And this amp was with him every step of the way. Um, the actual, the, the original one. Um, the story goes, with Stapleton on tour, you know, had always been kind of a Fender guy and tried different ones, uh, bought a 62 Princeton that somebody had put a 12 inch speaker in and suddenly it like, really spoke to him and, and became that signature sound. And uh, if you've seen him live, you've seen that amp um, on all of his shows, pretty much from the beginning. And so what they did, uh, his amp was wearing, uh, well, it's kind of vulnerable. You know, a, a, uh, an old amp like that is a little cranky. So he talked to Fender about getting another one made and he said, well, why don't we do a run of them? So, that's how we got this signature, and they really did it right. They started with um, this, you know, the classic, is it the CG2 circuit board, hand-wired, um, original 12 watts, uh, the tubes are two 6V6s, one uh, 5Y3 rectifier tube, and there's something about rectifier, tube rectifiers, they just got this saggy thing that's, I don't know, rich. Um, and then two 12AX7 preamp tubes. So all these ingredients just give you that sound. Um, there's the Fender Vintage Blue Tone capacitors and the upgrade of the 12 inch speaker I think makes a huge difference. Um, the, uh, uh, there's, a, there's a place for 10s, I totally get it. But I think guitars are a little more I don't know, a little more magic with the, with the 12, something about that, for, that works better. Um, Schumacher Transformer and a solid pine cab, just like the original. Um, now, some people argue that, that you know, the, the kind of plywood approach that amp companies are using today are actually sonically whatever, you know, better. But man, I don't know what, I don't know what, if it's, one ingredient or all of them together, but it just sounds great. And that tremolo, you know, of course you've got, you have very limited, you have, uh, you, you have, your only effect is tremolo, there's no verb, which I miss a little bit, you know, admittedly. But uh, the tremolo is just fabulous. Now I'm told around 1964, Fender began doing a different thing on the tremolo. One is maybe a, one is like a, a uh, what is it? 
uh, vibrato and one's a tremolo or whatever. I don't know. That's more of an ask an amp man kind of thing. But there was a change. And which one's better? I mean, it's, it's kind of, you know, what's your favorite beer? Everybody has their own taste. But whatever this one is, is really rich. And it's got everything from, you, know, you can turn it down to a more subtle kind of thing. And that's almost kind of like a Leslie, uh, like a slow Leslie, but then you put it up on, you know, the space, uh, spaceman kind of thing. I mean, what a great, crazy sci-fi kind of tone. Other than that, I mean, it couldn't be simpler. You've got, you've got your tremolo, you've got your, you've got your one switch for that, and then you have volume and tone. Uh, I was running it at kind of a six and six because it's kind of a sweet spot right there. I, it seems like, um, it seems like. I don't know, on some Fender amps, anything above five on your, tr on your, on your treble seems a little, a uh, little bright, but tone is not necessarily treble. They're not really like synonymous. Tone kind of gives you more than just that high end. So, but I do like it right here. Uh, I tell you what, why don't I try a, a telly so you can hear the subtle difference in that. And it, it's funny, I remember when I was a kid, like, you'd hear people talking about, oh, he had really good tone and tone and all that stuff. And I, I don't know what all the fuss was about because it seems to me like back then, you know, you would just plug a good guitar into a good amp and it's going to sound good. And there weren't that many options. Uh, you know, Fender was, f running a Fender guitar into a Fender amp, you're really not going to go that far off the mark. It's hard to mess that up. So it kind of takes the whole... You know, back in the day, these session dudes weren't really carrying a lot of pedals, but they'd have like a 62, you know, 62 Princeton or a, or a Deluxe or whatever and plug like a 50s telly into it and it would, it would sound pretty good, <laughs> you know, and it should. So here is, here's just a telly. Now, if we crank that up, bring up that tone a little bit more. Give it a little more goose on volume. Man, let me just go ahead and dime that tone. Now I've got my tone all the way up. It's on a bridge with the tone all the way up and the tone all the way up on, on the amp. And I mean, it's, it's high andy, but it isn't like a really unpleasant high andy. It's just gonna kind of cut in a mix. And there's a great light breakup, you know, like almost kind of like a Keith Richards kind of thing, you know, just starting to get kind of angry. Love that. alive. Uh, let's try some humbuckers on this thing while we're at it. Why not, right? Okay, let's see. So
it's pretty cool you get that you get that feedback but there's no pedals we're just going straight in it's not prohibitively loud and it's not all that dirty you know depending on where you want to put your you can really work your volume and get all these tones because this thing's just so much fun. Ooh, before I forget, also in keeping with the old school Fendry kind of thing, comes with this kind of badass canvas bag, which, you know, it's, it's not like a road case, <laughs> but it's going to help keep this, uh, keep this cool old school brown finish in, uh, you know, looking good. I like that it's got an old school leather handle, it's kind of like a like a saddle almost. I mean, the the give a shit level is high in building this, which I, I really love. Um, just for funsies, let's go ahead and put on the Gretsch and see what that does. I like that, man. Kind of a. That to me is a really kind of cool rockabilly tone, you know, when they're when they're just on the edge of breaking up. But that's on, you know, tone all the way up, volume on eight. Let's go ahead and bring her all the way up to 10. And it's not gonna get that much louder, just a little bit dirtier. You know, at that point, it's funny, you can just hear these little amps just trying their best, but all they can do is like kind of let out a loud, you know, a, uh, uh, a distress scream. It's not going to be really louder. So it gets pretty fuzzy at that point, but still a cool town, you know? Because this has, you know, the original Jensen 10, I know those are kind of revered today, but man, this, this speaker, which is an eminent C, uh, is it a C5 or CS speaker, is so much, it's serving this so much better. Like a 10 at this point would get real, the old Jensen 10s would be really farty at this point. So Fender, good on you, excellent job. These 1962 amps are really hard to find, and if you find one, there's no telling what it's going to sound like because it's going to be old and cranky. I mean, the thing is old. And good on you for recognizing Chris Stapleton as what a game-changing artist. So love that. Uh, check out our rig rundowns. Check out Instagram, YouTube, all that jazz. Read the, read the uh, magazine. Check out my column, Premier Guitar, and we'll see you next time.